Hi there, I'm here with Jed Hafer, my good friend. How's it going, Charles? Good to see you. You know, I, I'm doing really, really good. I I feel very fortunate because I have uh, three boys, and uh, one of them's still at home, and he's what I would categorize as a tween. Oh. Yeah. And, and yet you feel fortunate. I do. I do, because it's really fun. Uh, but I got to thinking that uh, my psychology degree, I think, helped a little bit, and my experience, believe it or not, has helped a, a little bit. Glad to hear that. A little bit. Uh, and because what I realize is a lot of the really annoying things that uh, this age of kid does does tend to uh, go away if we don't lock it in by getting into power struggles or uh, uh, angry interchanges with the kid and have the relationship go downhill. So that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you you worked with a lot of teenagers. Uh, I did, you, and I've I've had, had I've had four go through that tween time. My my yeah. oldest is twenty, second oldest is nineteen, and then I have two fifteen year olds. So I've I've navigated the tween times uh, four times I think and you're exactly right a lot of those things that that kind of grate on our nerves uh -huh. they don't stay around forever especially if we don't try to overcompensate and, and micromanage them yeah and so what are some of those things that we're talking about I mean well they learn to roll their eyes somewhere in that time rolling, uh, this one <coughs> <laughs> you know that is so and correcting me. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I'm stupid now. <laughs> I didn't realize I was, but You've got a yeah. tween who wants to tell you how yeah, it really well, is. You know, yeah, this is this is how you do this. And and sometimes it's even borderline respectful uh, <laughs> delivery, but it gets annoying after a while, you know, when you're constantly uh, corrected. What else? I, I think there's a there's a willingness to be more brave about uh -huh. the conflict with mom or dad or adults. Uh, just feeling a little more bold about I can assert myself and tell you you're either you're wrong or tell you why I deserve this thing. Yeah. Yeah. So negotiation. entitled a little bit more entitled yeah. in their in their negotiation. Yeah. yeah. How about uh, how about noises? Yeah, just in general, and just annoying noises. I mean, like. Um, well, that sometimes they discover music. The, the music that is targeted for oh. for tweens, uh, I'm, I'm afraid, is not my favorite. Sing, <laughs> it's, sing. It's not always my sing. Favorite. Yeah, sing. And they'll imitate it. And there's a sing. Was it YouTube videos? It's not annoying, but that that's what I'm going through. I'm sorry. Um, Sing. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling empathy for you that and you're going through that. And poking. Yeah, a little bit uh, more aggressive, just physical yeah. boundaries. Yeah, and I have to remind myself. I mean, I'm glad that he wants to poke me, and it's really not painful, but it's just sometimes it's annoying. I, just, I are any of you going through? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should substitute the chair for a couch, you know, and you yeah. can sit down and just tell us more about it for a little. I, I know a mom who's who's got a tween, and and his thing is to stand just inches from her and and demand things. You know, yeah. if he gets hungry, and it's mom, you know, and he, I think he's 11 or 12, but he's close to her height. So that yeah, starts exactly. to happen too. That's the exactly. weird thing. They've grown, you know, several inches overnight, and their pores have expanded, and oh. it's just weird. And they smell. Yeah, they've started I mean, to smell they differently. Really, they really start to smell. Um, and <laughs> You have that sweet spot of after diapers and potty training, <laughs> and then for a while, but then oh the goodness. hormones and things kick in and the needs for, for deodorant and, and such. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not joking about how annoying it is, but I, I guess I could have a lot of humor over it because I do know, based on work with kids, uh, and my studies in psychology, and you know this too, is that a lot of this is is actually developmental stuff. It yes, is is part of learning about who you are. It's part of becoming your own person. It's part of experimentation. It's all stuff that is really mostly benign unless we get really angry. If we give a big reaction, get into a big fight or power struggle about it. Stop what? saying zing! Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and we, we, get, we can really lock those behaviors in. And, and what's really sad is when you see a family where the kid is going through a lot of that stuff, and instead of the parent just saying, okay, 
in their head, this too shall pass. I am going to be big on basic respect and character issues, the big stuff, values, honesty, that sort of stuff. No, I'm not going to let that stuff go, but I am going to have to just say to myself, okay, uh, <clears throat> this this too shall pass. We'll get to a different stage. Absolutely. And I think for, for some, some short-term answers, one of the things that really helped me is sending kids on therapeutic errands or, or finding things for them to do. One of the things they need is an outlet for some of that energy and that experimentation yeah. that is not me, <laughs> right? <laughs> so yes. if I can kind of give them some things that are, especially if they're, if they're great kind of developmental and learning types of tasks, or if they serve some purpose, but even if they don't, it's still better than them right in my face uh, aggravating me. You know, you are so right, Jed, because I know that Cody, uh, and what a, and he's a great kid. I, he is a great really, kid. Yeah, I really enjoy him. And, and I, you know, but you're so right about tasks. If they have something to do that's important, you know, that can make all the difference in the world. And I have to say, I'm so proud of him. And, and I, I want him, to, if he ever watches this video, to see the positive side. But, you know, if I ever asked him to do something or, you know, when the rubber hits the pavement, I mean, he's there, you know. And, and I, I hear a lot of parents say that about their tweens is that, oh, man, they're great kids. And, you know, when it comes down to it, they, they do anything I asked them to do. And they're still very loving, you know, at times. But just just difficult or they do like to help once we get past the really annoying part of yeah. trying to get them to help or compel them to do anything it almost it almost needs to be their idea and they're in this internal struggle for some autonomy and what to do with some of their new autonomy and so from the kid's standpoint, if it's my idea, yeah, I'm all about it. Uh, someone else telling me what to do, I'm getting too big for that. And it's also a time, too, where, like you say, they're in an internal struggle. And and I remember being that age. And, and uh, Were you annoying? No. Okay. I, was just, I mean, I was so mature. I believe you. That a lot of, uh, I always wondered why my teachers in junior high didn't last that long. It's like we kept having new Probably ones. you were too mature for them. I they, think so. They were overwhelmed yeah, by your they, maturity they kept and they going would drift. on early retirement. You know, we'd get one, they'd only last for a little while and then they'd <laughs> bail out. But no, I was, I was a typical squirrely kid. And uh, yeah, I, I, I had one teacher where I, I wish, you know, do you want to go back and find your teachers and apologize? And, and thank them. I want to thank them and simultaneously apologize because I was the same way. I was I was the youngest of four boys, so super squirrely, and I learned tricks from my older brothers to be extra annoying. Extra annoying. I was ahead of that curve. Yeah, I used to do this. Whenever there was a silence and the teacher had his back turned to us, I'd just go, milk. <laughs> now, is it that annoying or what? Milk. And uh, you say why? Well, because you were a tween. Yeah, probably. yeah, it was bad. Uh, but how about the like clumsiness thing? Are you seeing that thing? Are, are well, he here's thing? here's how my kids uh, when they were when they were about twelve. Here's how they would carefully set down a drink. Wham! Oh, gosh. <laughs> a apparently, they're part Viking or something. It just. <laughs> Yeah, it's so true. There's a lack of oh, a lack of careful. I'm feeling better talking about this. It's true. Way. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, wham. You know, it's all over the place, and and no door can ever be closed. Uh, you know, carefully. Yeah. Everything's got to just be wham. And falling a lot. Because over air. Be because you're not looking. You know. Yeah. You're because looking at something else. Yeah, and um, or. You know, honestly, I think it's a matter of physics and a lack of integration between, like, the size of limbs and the brain. Yeah. You know, it's well, you like, just got six inches taller overnight. It's just harder to keep that whole whole apparatus upright. Exactly, yeah. You know, and you used to go like this, and you didn't touch anybody. Now you go like this, and you're right on somebody. Which That's true. Which speaks, again, to the whole issue of lack of boundaries. So am I making an excuse for bad behavior? Well, <laughs> I'm trying not to. But I'm also saying, yeah, we, we hold them accountable for the big stuff. Um, the, the values like, you know, getting home when you say you're going to come home or at least calling, you know, and letting us know where you are. 
uh, telling the truth about things, treating people with respect, uh, all those basic things. Not consuming the really dangerous stuff that, that is right, out there. That's a right. big deal, too, for that, tweens. That's right. And then all this other stuff, really, if we try to control it, we'll just go insane. And uh, uh, I've heard that's not good for kids when their parents... Yeah, it's not it's not healthy. Yeah, you know, you'll be like that whack-a-mole game where you're constantly trying to, to, to squash every annoying behavior and it's just it's too much. We know there's too yeah, many of those. Yeah. So another thing that really helps is talking to a good friend about it and venting and, and hearing that yes, uh, their kids do also um, at least right now, kind of come across like, um, how would you categorize them? I like the Viking analogy. It, it, it's, it's kind of like um, kind of clueless Vikings in a, in a china shop. Yeah, and, and, and it's as soon as you realize that, that a lot of kids this age are kind of having some of the same issues, part of what it helped me is go, oh, this isn't as intentional. I don't take it as personally. Right. They didn't yeah. wake up in the morning thinking, I'm going to wreck a lot of things as I walk through the house, or I'm going to leave a trail. Yeah. And then when you mention it to me, I'm going to have a little more of an attitude than I did, you know, just a few, a few months ago. Right. That it's, it's knowing someone else is going through it, but also that it's not as targeted at me as it might feel yeah, sometimes. It's not a personal attack on you. Well, thank you for the therapeutic session. Uh, <laughs> Anytime. Dr. Freud. And uh, I'm just glad we filmed it. That's, that's, that's good. That, that's right. And so um, anyway, if you have uh, younger kids, look what you get, get what you, you get to look forward to this. It's, it's just great. It, it's just it's like coming. your three-year-olds, but just on a bigger it's bigger scale. It's coming for you. So. But if you're in it, remember that they are going to get more mature they're going to get uh, more control generally, and they're going to learn a yeah. little bit better what to do with this this freedom and this autonomy, and this uh, this growth that they've experienced. And if you and if you're an older parent and you've been through it, and you're kind of on the other side of it, and you see younger parents and they're having problems with their uh, tweens in the store, just just um, just love on them a little bit and smile at them and know that. Uh, it's hard. Give them a look of empathetic solidarity. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Well, thanks for watching, and thanks again, Chad. Thank you. Uh -huh.